Okay, here's my problem. Well, good morning channel up oh, no wait good evening channel it is in fact evening you know I bought this bike three months ago and have been riding it to work a little taking it on a few short motovlogs um, I got about 615 miles on it now and I don't think I ever saw a stated break-in period I've heard some people say 300 whatever my in my head that break-in period was 600 miles so I haven't been really gassing it or haven't been in sport mode hardly at all um, through this you know break-in period uh, and I let it go a little longer you know 600 miles is, is what I had in my head for break-in period and we've eclipsed that so a couple things first I really get to have fun on the bike now I'm excited about that but also it's time for my first oil change. Now, if you look at the Honda owner's manual, the Goldwing owner's manual, in the maintenance schedule, it shows the first oil change, oil and filter change at 4,000 miles. That seems a little crazy to me. I mean, they're the engineers, they should know, but you know what, this is my bike. I paid a sh ton of money for this bike and it needs to last me for a long time and as cruise man's fond of saying and I love it the saying you're never gonna hurt an engine with fresh oil so in this break-in period you know what's it doing I you know it's <laughs> in my mind it's shaving off the little factory metal flakes that are uh, inherent in the engine when it was in the uh, building process. I, you know, I'm no engineer. I'm sure I've got this all wrong. But I think this first 600 miles, the oil that's in there, while it's still probably very fresh, just needs to come out. So we're going to do an oil change tonight. Uh, the first oil change on the bike. Uh, I've watched several people. Chris Caliente cruise man I think wing stuff even has a video out there so many videos out there on how to change the oil so I'm pretty confident I know how to do it um, doesn't look difficult looks messy um, so we're gonna do that tonight get rid of that old oil put in some brand new oil some brand new filters and man we are gonna just have some fun on this bike from here on out I can't wait The owner's manual goes on to say, after 4,000 miles, it jumps up to 12,000 miles before the next oil change. And that's not filters. They just want you to change the oil. 8,000 miles later. I mean, God bless this bike if it can do that. There is no way I'm waiting that long. You know, I'm 3,500, 4,000 miles, maybe. But it'll be an oil and filter change every time I do it. Anyway, it's a little crazy to me. So, we're going to get started. Um, let me show you the tools and gadgets I have uh, for this project this evening. All right, first up is this ultra thin oil pan. It's a very unique design. Uh, I think Cruise Man did a review on this. That's where I saw it, and that's when I got it. But it's very low profile because there's not a lot of space under this bike especially since honda recommends that you have it on its side stand when you change the oil and indeed uh, more oil comes out on the side stand than it does on the center stand so gonna have to get low to the ground that's what this thing does now 
there's not a lot of slope on this and a lot of oil comes out at one time you know I'm I'm hoping it can handle the flow I think it can we're gonna see I'm either it's either gonna handle the flow or I'm gonna have a big mess on my hands and we'll never be using this thing again but I'm gonna try that out all right so I have the uh, transmission filter it's one of the filters that goes in I have the regular oil filter brand new bought all of this stuff from Revzilla. Um, I have uh, an O-ring. The O-ring is for that goes on that goes on the cap that seals this in. So I'm gonna replace that every time I replace the oil. I know you don't have to, but I'm going to. It's not very expensive. Crush washers. There are three uh, oil plugs at the bottom of this motorcycle. Each of them with a uh, aluminum crush washer and it recommends replacing that crush washer each time uh, and I'm gonna do it so I bought three of those um, gloves because I'm gonna make a holy mess I'm sure um, a filter wrench I got it at Walmart fits this filter because I've heard that the filter is a little difficult to get off can't get your hands up in there. There's not a lot of space. So the filter. Um, the oil I bought from the local Honda dealership. I think all of it together, the four quarts here and the fifth quart here was about $54. All of this was about $41. So we're looking at, you know, just under $100 for the stuff. But I'm going to do it myself. So no charges, no labor charges on that. Okay, um, I think first they want you to run the bike for three to five minutes just to get the oil warm and then let it sit for three to five minutes and cool down a little bit. And then I'm going to throw a towel down there and get the oil pan down there and get started. Okay, one other thing. I've seen enough videos of these oil changes to know that it's just about assured that you're going to drop an oil plug, uh, a bolt, in the oil. You're just going to drop it. It's going to be slippery. You're, you're getting it loose. You're going to. It's just going to drop it. And I thought to myself, well, I don't know how big they are, but they might go down that hole right there. So I fashioned went to Lowe's and just bought some mesh mesh wire and I fashioned this little I'm not sure how it goes on this little screen there we go just fits in the grooves it shouldn't slow down any of the oil but if the drain plug falls on here it won't go down in there now I could fish it out with a magnet I'm sure but that's gonna be hard to do through these tiny little holes so this hopefully just saves me some aggravation. Also, as a prep for this oil change, I forgot, I didn't forget, I guess I did, that I have the Traction Dynamics belly pan on here and protects the engine. You can see it's already hit a few things. I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, I'm going to have to take this off to uh, change the oil. So we're going to start by doing that. Hey, good morning channel. Slight change of plans. We were looking at changing the oil last night and I got partially away into that when I got a notification on my phone. I looked down and it was another video put out by Cruise Man. So I glanced at the thumbnail just to see what it was all about and oh my gosh, an 18 wheeler backed into him at an intersection. He was 15, 20 feet behind this guy um, and the guy missed his turn or something, I, I don't know, and had headphones on so he couldn't hear what was going on and started backing up and cruise man's laying on the horn. There's a bystander laying on the horn. This guy's not hearing anybody backs into him and just crushes the front wheel, destroys the front fender. It looks like it messed up the front 
fairing, and I'm sure the shocks, God knows what's wrong with that uh, bike now. Um, thank God, cruise man's fine. He jumped or got thrown off the bike um, onto a little sidewalk that was nearby, and he's a little scuffed and bruised, but had most of his gear on, and, and he's, he's fine. He's going to be fine. But what a scary, what a scary deal. Man, I, I learned something through his video. <clears throat> I don't know if I can avoid it. I'm never going to come to a stop behind an 18-wheeler. It was unreal. You go check it out. Um, anyway, we're going to get back on the uh, oil change this morning. Um, it's early. It's a lot cooler than it was yesterday, so I'm sure the concrete's going to be cold. Um, so I'm going to wait for the sun to come up and... and you know, warm up things a little bit, and then we're going to get back on this oil change. Thanks for joining me. All right, I got the traction dynamics plate off the bottom of the bike. You can see just a little bit of damage. Not sure what has jumped up and hit that. Maybe a rock or whatever. I certainly didn't remember anything happening. But so glad I have this. Um, you can see any number of videos out there whether it's traction dynamics or wings, wing stuff or whatever, you need a belly pan because something jumps up and hits that bottom of that engine. It could break it thousands and thousands of dollars worth of repair. They got to drop the engine out, just completely replace it. This is definitely money well spent. Anyway, not too worse for wear. There is not a lot of room to work here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Back up just a bit. Got this ultra skinny oil pan for the oil to fall into. Got the little mesh uh, cover there in case I drop, or when rather, I drop a nut. And there's not a lot of daylight in there. I mean, I think I can get a wrench in there. Especially when it's on its side stand like this. I think I'm going to be taking off that. There's three, by the way, drain plugs in the bottom of this engine. All 12 millimeter. This one points straight down. I'm going to take this one out first. And then there's another one on the back side right here. 12 millimeter. That after this one, first one drains, I'll open that one up. Get all this out. Then I'll take the oil filter, which is back here. Ow! <laughs> Don't touch the hot pipes, Robert. Sorry, oil filter's over here. All right, try not to touch the hot pipes, Robert. a little easier than I thought it would. All right, I hope this drains quickly enough. Not a lot of slope on this pan. So we're either going to be okay here or make a giant mess. I think we'll be okay. I hope we'll be okay. Well, that was painless. Didn't drain very much. Maybe that's not the main one. We'll let it keep going here and then do the other one. All right, well, that one's draining. Let's see if we can get this other one off. This will be a trick. It's a little bit of an angle. All right, well, it helps if you're turning the damn nut the right way. It's upside down and sideways. Had me confused on the direction. Well, I have conveniently ripped my glove, so back for another glove, half a second. You know, there's a running joke in my family that I can't do one project without bringing blood. <laughs> That uh, glove is a little evidence of it, but it's so true. I could be dusting off the windshield 
and I would somehow make myself bleed. It's a curse passed down from my father because it was the same way with my father. All right, I'm just, let me get you around here, maybe easier to see. I'm just twisting this with my finger. Let me get that little more, that pan a little more under where it's going to dump out. And I think this is the main oil reservoir. There we go. Uh, yeah. You kind of got to get it over that hole in the oil drain pan because it was kind of filling up. But I think it's going to work, so that's good. That was the big one. And I'm two for two. Didn't drop the, the plug. I need to put a new crush washer on this one because I'm pretty sure I crushed it to death a minute ago. Now you see what I've told you, YouTube? Brought blood on that knuckle. How in the heck do you bring blood and not break this flimsy little glove? I'm telling you. <laughs> it's a talent. It is just a talent. All right. Got that plug back in. Now I'm moving to the third drain plug, which I believe is that one right there. So we're going to remove that and let that drain. I scoop my pan down, drain completely, and put that back in. And then we'll get to that uh, oil filter. And right here is where the transmission filter is. So we're going to have to do that as well. Okay. Three for three. Didn't drop a single plug. Gonna let the strain back in a second. All right, that's drained good enough. Get this plug back in here. And then I think what we'll do is tighten all of these down, clean them up a little bit, and then tighten them down. All right. I'm going to use this oil filter wrench and see if we can't get this oil filter off. I think we only need a couple of turns with the wrench and then we can do the rest by hand. All right, I can't get that oil filter off, uh, so I'm going to go to the auto parts store and see if I can find another solution. This oil cap just keeps slipping off when I twist it. Um, I can't keep it on there. Okay, here's my problem. This filter wrench that I bought from Walmart is graduated. It fits more than one filter, like 63 to 67 millimeter. I don't, I'm not sure what the exact size was, but you can see maybe that it's graduated in there. It's wider at the edge, gets skinnier as it goes in, and it just keeps slipping off the oil filter under there. The oil filter from the factory is way too tight on there, and I can't get, I can't get it to stay on no matter what I do. So it's only 600 miles, so I'm gonna leave the oil filter on there, change everything else, change the transmission filter, everything else, new oil in it, I think it's going to be fine with the other oil filter, the original oil filter staying on there. It's only got 600 miles on it. And when it comes time for the next oil change, I'll have to take it into the dealership and have them do it so that they can get that filter off and put the next one on uh, not as tight so I can do it from that point on. Probably with this, you know, cup wrench here. But all right. Let's get the transmission filter off next. All right, I've loosened the bolts to the cap that covers the, the transmission filter. Um, they're eight millimeter bolts, so just got an eight millimeter socket, and I loosened those up. Now I'm gonna take those off. Now the thing about this cap and filter, well the cap in particular, there's a spring in there 
that kind of pushes the filter up into place all the time. And so I don't want to lose or drop that spring. I've got to be careful. Well, these screws are longer. There we go. All right, that's what one looks like. We're going to set that down out here. Get the other one. It's probably going to get kind of messy here. Okay. That spring just popped that sucker <laughs> right out. There is an O-ring. It's supposed to fit tighter than that, but... Okay. There we go, and there's the spring. And see, it would have gone right down in that hole if I hadn't had this this little grate on there so let me grab that spring get it out of harm's way over here gonna have to get something to work that filter out of there so one second all right I'm gonna use this little pick to reach up there and pull that filter out because it doesn't want to just come out all by itself. That's my neighbor and his motorcycle. There goes the filter. Slightly less refined than the Goldwing, but pretty cool bike nonetheless. Alright, Mr. Old Filter, I'm just going to let you drain right there. And I'm going to get the new filter and put it up in there. It should just slide up in there and stay. Something like that. Okay, go get that spring and see if we can't get this cap back on. All right, this old O-ring came out just fine, very easy, just pulls right out. I'm gonna put the new one in now. All right, yeah, the new the new O-ring just slides right on, just rolls down into place. And you gotta be careful when you're putting this back up in the hole that it fits in, not to crimp that O-ring, um, cause you'll have an oil leak if you do. Okay. Get this cleaned up. I'm going to put this cap back on it but you kind of you kind of got to put the spring in there and stick it back up in there like that while you get these bolts in there because I want to keep that spring in place but I also want to keep this cap level when I get it fully seated because of that o-ring. I think I got that back up in there. Nothing crimped. Hopefully it doesn't leak. So I think now everything's tight. Original oil filter is still in there and tight obviously. All the three bolts, the 12 millimeter bolts are in there and tight. So let's put some oil back in this thing. All right, I've uh, put the bike on the center stand for the purpose of filling it back up with oil. To check the oil, it needs to come off the center stand, but not be on the side stand either. It needs to be in an upright position, so you actually have to sit on the bike to check the oil level. Had I changed the oil filter, Honda recommends 4.9 gallons. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> gallons, yeah, 4.9 quarts. Um, but I did not change the oil filter this time, so I'm going to have to take this carefully because I don't want to overfill the bike. So I've got four quarts here. I'm going to put almost all of this in and check it and then go from there. All right. 
right now we start the bike and see if there's any leaks and then take it off its center stand and check the level and do what we need to do from there all right I filled it back up with oil I think I put four quarts in it almost exactly uh, it's difficult to check the oil Honda recommends you check it on level ground that doesn't mean the center stand that means sit on the bike and hold it up and check the oil while you're sitting on it so I did that and I had to add some more did it again had to add some more difficult process I mean just got to be a better way Honda seriously anyway got it filled back where it belongs let it run for a while check for leaks there are no leaks so I think I'm in good shape uh, all that's left now is to put that traction dynamics belly pan back on there. It's an easy, uh, it's easy to take off and easy to put on after the initial install. It's just, it's easy. So I'm going to put that back on and I think we're done for a while. Uh, now when I get to about 4,000 miles and I start thinking about a, another oil change, I'll likely take it to Honda just so they can be the, the guys that figure how to get that filter off and if any of you guys have a great idea on how to get that filter off i mean i've messed with filters for a long time in my life i've i've taken a hammer and a screwdriver and drilled a screwdriver through a car filter before to get it to turn uh not going to do that with this obviously and i can't get a strap in there for some sort of strap grip you know to to get it off so I'm kind of at a loss, and I think once we get this first factory one off, from that point on, I'm putting a little oil on the O-ring, and I'm hand tightening it only. I think we're good to go after that first one. It's just not getting that first one off, but if any of y'all have any secrets, let me know. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this uh, first oil change for the bike. Uh, I think we did okay. Uh, didn't go quite as planned, but we're in a good place. Anyway, uh, until the next video, guys, ride safe and God bless.